Hello children and in today's session we are going to be visiting our nearest neighbor the moon. So let's look at the moon. Now when we see the moon, the moon is a ball of rock that is nearly quarter the size of the earth and it is at a distance of 384,400 kilometers away from the earth. So which makes moon our nearest neighbor in space. Now, although the moon is a bright object in the night sky, it does not have any light of its own. Do you know that? It doesn't have any light of its own. And in fact, whatever light of the moon that you see is nothing but the reflection of the sun's light. So sun's light falls on the moon and the moon simply reflects that light onto the earth. So this is how it works. Now let's see how are the conditions on the moon. Now we all know that there is no life on the moon and it has no water and the surface is pretty much covered with a layer of dust. Not just that, it has mountains and huge round pits on its surface which are called as craters. So this right here is a crater. You can see that there are so many craters on its surface. And the interesting thing is, from the Earth's surface, if we use a telescope, we can see these craters that are present on the moon. Now, the moon has no atmosphere surrounding itself like the earth does so because it has no atmosphere it also has no wind it has no clouds and it has no rain at all and you must all know children that the function of the atmosphere on earth is that during the day it absorbs the heat and makes sure that the earth doesn't become very hot and during the night it retains heat to make sure that the earth doesn't freeze but since the moon does not have an atmosphere at all, it becomes boiling hot during the day and it gets freezing cold during the night. You can see atmosphere plays such an important role in our lives. Now, a few more interesting facts about the moon is that no voices can be heard on the moon because there is no air. Even if you stand on the moon and shout, nobody will be able to hear you because sound travels through air. And since there is no air on the moon, there is no voice that can be heard. And you also know that Earth has its own force which is called as the gravitational force and because of this gravitational force it pulls everything towards itself. No matter what you throw up it lands down because of Earth's gravity. So in the same way our moon also has its own gravity but as we saw moon is so much more smaller than the Earth so even its gravitational force is a lot lesser. To be specific, it's just one-sixth the force of gravity on Earth. Which means that if you jump one meter high on Earth, you can jump six meters high on Moon with the same effort that you put to jump for one meter on Earth. Not just that, even your weight differs from Earth to Moon. Your weight on Moon is just one-sixth your weight on Earth. So, go ahead and try to calculate your weight, whatever your weight is, suppose you are 23 kilos, you put 23 divided by 6, whatever answer you get, that is your weight on moon. Isn't that so interesting? Now we'll see how exactly the moon moves. Now the moon revolves around the earth in the same way that our earth revolves around the sun. And this moon takes 28 days to complete one revolution. So whatever revolution that you're seeing in this picture here actually takes 28 days to complete. And moon is the only natural satellite that Earth has. So what is a natural satellite? Satellites are generally objects that go around stars or planets. And natural satellites of planets, we call them as moon. And Earth has only one natural satellite, which is the moon. 
now i'm sure day in and day out when you look at the night sky you will see different faces of the moon you will see sometimes the moon is not visible sometimes it's a crescent sometimes it's half and things like that so right now let us talk a little more about the faces of the moon the moon as seen from the earth seems to be changing shapes every other day now this is because we only see one part of the moon this part of the moon reflects the light of the sun towards us so in this part if you say this part of the moon is reflecting sun's light whereas here this part of the moon is reflecting the sun's light so whichever part of the moon is reflecting the sun's light that is what we get to see the rest of the moon is always dark and we cannot see it like you can see the rest of this moon here is dark so is here so any part of the moon that you don't see which is dark does not reflect light from the sun now these different shapes that we see of the moon is what we call as faces of the moon so let's look at them in detail now Now these faces are five different faces. We have the new moon which starts on day 1 where you see no moon at all. On a new moon day, the side of the moon that faces us gets no sunlight at all. So that's why we call it as a new moon. It is on day 1. So you can see this here. This is actually the new moon day. when the part of the moon that faces the earth does not absorb any sunlight so we see a dark moon like this so this is on day 1 then we move on to what is called as the crescent moon as the moon moves along its orbit now in this case it's moving in this direction now as it's moving along its orbit a small portion of the moon faces the earth so that gets sunlight so you can see that we see a crescent moon so this is seen on day 4 after the crescent moon we have the half moon that we see now half moon happens in a week's time from day 1 and you see half the moon so this happens on day 7 so you can see from the crescent moon we are moving towards the half moon because half the moon gets the sun's light and we are able to see it then from then we move on to what is called as the gibbous moon now this gibbous moon happens 3 days after the half moon and we get to see 3/4 of the moon's surface so that is here so you can see gibbous moon on day 10 and it is soon after the half moon and finally we end up with a full moon day two weeks after day 1 when the entire side facing the earth gets sunlight so we get to see the entire moon this happens on day 14 of the cycle so from the gibbous moon we move to the full moon now this is half of the cycle now the second half of the cycle which is the next 14 days happens in the reverse order that is from full moon it moves to the gibbous moon and from the gibbous moon it goes to the half moon from the half moon it goes to the crescent moon and from crescent moon we're back to where we started with new moon so this takes another 14 days so you know that one revolution takes 28 days so one half takes 14 days the other half takes another 14 days which brings us to a total of 28 days so this is about the faces of the moon now let's talk about some very important people who actually set foot on the moon now there were three americans named neil armstrong edwin aldrin and michael collins who were the first people to land on moon these were the three men who landed on moon with neil armstrong edwin aldrin and michael collins and they traveled and landed on moon on a spacecraft called as apollo 11 and this is apollo 11 Now among these three gentlemen it was Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin who first stepped foot out into the moon on the 21st July 1969. 
Now let's talk a little about Eclipse. What exactly is Eclipse? Now if you shine a torch on the wall and you place your finger in between, you'll get a shadow which looks like this, right? You can play around with it and things like that. In the very same fashion, the earth and the moon will cast shadows out into the space when sunlight falls on it. Now when this happens, this causes two kinds of eclipses. What are the two types of eclipses that we have? We have the solar eclipse and we have the lunar eclipse. Now let's first see the solar eclipse. Now when we see the solar eclipse, here the sun, the moon and the earth line up in the straight line with moon in the center. So we have the sun, the moon and the earth with the moon in the center. And if you see here, the moon is blocking sun's light and it casts a shadow on the earth. So this is the shadow that is cast on the earth because of the moon coming between the sun and the earth. Now because of this what happens, some people within this shadow region cannot see the sun at all. For example, this region that is very very dark, these people cannot see the sun at all. For them, sun is visible like this because the moon is right in the center so they can only see a halo around it. So these people who see the sun like this are said to be in total solar eclipse. For them, the sun is completely blocked. Whereas there are some people towards this outer ring of the eclipse like this grey area here who can see the sun partially. And these people are said to be in partial solar eclipse. So here the sun is partially blocked. Now once this eclipse ends, the moon moves on on its orbit. And you can see here the moon is moving on and you can see more of the sun being exposed here. So the eclipse does not last for more than 7 minutes. It takes just 7 minutes for the eclipse to be done and over. And children, you should never see a solar eclipse directly with your eyes because it can damage your eyes. So you have to wear solar sunglasses in order to see an eclipse. So please keep that in mind or you are going to damage your eyes. Next, we will move on to the lunar eclipse. When we see the lunar eclipse, here as you can see the picture itself, the sun, the earth and the moon line up in the straight line with the earth in the center. And due to this, the earth casts a shadow on the moon. So you can see here the earth is casting a shadow on the moon. So if the shadow of the earth covers the entire moon, it's called as the total lunar eclipse. And if the shadow of the earth covers only a part of the moon, it's called as a partial lunar eclipse. So just like the solar eclipse, we have a total lunar eclipse and a partial lunar eclipse. Now finally, let's talk about something very interesting called artificial satellite. We said our moon is a natural satellite. Let us see what are artificial satellites. Now human beings have been very intelligent and have successfully placed their own satellites around the earth. And these satellites have been sent up there with the help of rockets. Now these artificial satellites revolve around the earth and they are used for various purposes. And since they have been installed there by man, they are called as artificial satellites. Now the world's first artificial satellite was Sputnik 1, which was launched on the 4th of October 1957 by the Russians. And it orbited the earth for nearly 6 months. And children, did you know that India's first satellite was Aryabhata? So this is Aryabhata right here and this is Sputnik 1 which was first put into orbit by the Russians. Now let's see the uses of satellite. Why do we have to put satellites up? Now there are one category of satellites called as the communication satellites. These satellites are used for communication as their name itself suggests. For this the example is INSAT 4CR which was launched by India in 2007 
and these communication satellites help in relaying television and radio programs also it is used in sending telephone signals for very far off places like we have satellite phones we then have a weather satellites what are weather satellites as the name itself suggests these satellites are used to study our atmospheric conditions and they look on earth from above and they help in forecasting the weather not just that satellites are used to photograph the earth from above and they give us really valuable information about the changes that is happening on the earth's surface and finally they are used to study the different stars and planets that are around the earth so with this we wrap the chapter about our friendly neighbor the moon let's quickly go through what all we learned So first we looked into the moon and we said it is quarter the size of the earth and it is at a distance of 384400 kilometers away from us then we saw the different conditions on the moon we said that the moon surface is full of pits called as craters it has mountains it's covered with a layer of dust it has no atmosphere because of which it becomes very hot during the day and extremely cold during the night Then we spoke about how the moon moves. We said that it revolves around the earth just like how the earth revolves around the sun and it takes about 28 days for one revolution to occur. And we studied about the different phases of the moon. We said the different phases of the moon were new moon, crescent moon, half moon, gibbous moon and finally full moon which takes 14 days and the next 14 days of the phases of the moon is reversed in the reverse order starting from the full moon and ending in the new moon. Then we spoke about three American men who landed on moon through the spacecraft Apollo 11. They were Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin and Michael Collins. Then we spoke about eclipses where the earth and the moon sh- cast shadows on each other because of the sun's light and we saw solar and lunar eclipses where in solar eclipses we saw that the moon comes between the sun and the earth and in the lunar eclipses we saw that the earth comes between the sun and the moon and we even spoke about what was total eclipse and what was partial eclipse Finally we spoke about artificial satellites and their uses we saw that the first artificial satellites was launched by the russians which was named as sputnik and the first indian artificial satellite was aryabhatta so with this we wrap this chapter up if you have any doubts please get back to us please like this video and share it with your friends thank you